Are muscles the cause of my scoliosis? In reality, no, most of the time. Now, some patients, and we see a lot of patients with back-related problems, and a lot of people coming in saying they've got scoliosis. First and most important thing is to understand, you really, other people know you have scoliosis when you have a scoliosis, because it's that severe, or when you have a severe scoliosis. And those patients, this video really isn't, isn't for, okay? Anyone that's indicated for surgery for Harrington rods, those sorts of things, that, that's separate. However, there are a lot of people that have mild scoliosis, and when you get your results back, primarily these are patients that they've been to the GP and GP said, oh, came back and you've got scoliosis. And that can set up all sorts of alarms, thinking you're like that patient that I just mentioned a moment ago, when in reality, what it is is something like that, okay? Or you're kind of a bit like that. Now, what else could cause that? Maybe it's a leg length. And in fact, in a lot of cases, it actually is. Patients come in and they've been told they've got a scoliosis and really it's very, very mild. And I wouldn't even term it a scoliosis because it's unnecessarily scaring the patient. It's really a slight lateral bend in the spine. And that is down to some sort of leg length issue or substantially maintained by a leg length issue. Say you've got one leg that's a centimeter longer or shorter than the other. You can see that, you can measure it and you can see that it's a very logical reaction of the body. It's not the muscles. It's the fact that the bones are shorter or longer on one side than the other, and the fact that you stand up all day. And this causes a bit of trouble when you then go from standing to sitting, to standing to sitting, because the pressure that builds up in this section can give people a good bit of back pain. Now, do your muscles have a role in some, if you are someone with one of these bends or scoliosis in your spine? Well, yes, of course they do. They provide you with much more stability because when the spine has these bends in them, as gravity loads on them, it increases the curve. Now, from the side, we have these natural curves and they're built very, very well to deal with the compression of gravity. They've got a nice spring stretch to them. They've got ligaments to guard against these movements here. But from the side, once we get out, we don't have that same support. So overcompensating with muscular support for that area is really gonna help just guard against that compressive effect of gravity. As a side note, there is, are some sectors of chiropractic that talk a lot about this upper neck joint having an effect and everything hanging down from the neck. Now, I, I'm not that educated on that school of thought, but as far as I'm concerned, if one leg's longer than the other, unless you're standing on your head, it doesn't really matter too much, okay? Because your feet are what's interacting with the ground most of the time. And this can be a few degrees out, but if the leg is a centimeter longer than the other, changing that isn't really gonna change the length of your bony femur on your tibia on your ankle so in short most patients they get a piece of paper from the GP it says scoliosis and it's very very minor it can really be helped and if you go into a little bit more detail with a little more thorough examination you look at those exercises and you go actually do you know what that's not that bad I can do some muscular work to actually support my spine but the muscles aren't the cause the other group of patients they do have very severe scoliosis and for those they need a little bit more specific advice and you can get that from your osteopathy chiropractor um, because they will be able to give you more detailed advice relative to you.